Things that are orange, pumpkins, cats, Doritos, lollipops, orange sherbet, cheese, orange juice, carrots, tulips, tigers, uh, Orioles, monarch butterflies, and sunburnt Irish people. And the 1959 Pontiac Bonneville that sits behind me. Welcome to a very big, big episode of Big Muscle. My name is Mike Musto. Each week I travel the country with the goal of showcasing the best and baddest muscle cars and hot rods around. Every car has a past and every owner a story. Welcome to the world of Big Muscle. Over the past three seasons of Big Muscle, we've shown you a wide variety of cars from a host of different time periods. However, if we were to pick one that was guided by sheer wonder and forward thinking, it would have to be that of the 1950s. This was a time when ornate designs and artistic freedom defined American transportation. Automobiles had interiors that looked like opera houses, fenders that made you stare, and faces as different as the people who bought them. Today's market, on the other hand, demands a relatable individuality, which explains why there are so many four-door coupes on the road and why everyone's headlights look so damn angry. This is the 1959 Pontiac Bonneville. The interior is a jewelry box, the exterior a perfect blend of intricate creases and smooth folds. This car is about design. So guys, let's start by saying this. This is not a road burner of a car. It is not a tire smoker. It is not a drift car. It is not a canyon carver. And it's not something that you sit in and do donuts with. Therefore, you might be asking yourself, well, why is it on big muscle? And the reason is simple. Look at it. One of the best looking cars that I've seen in a long, long time. You know, when we first met Chuck, I asked him flat out, I go, what, what is going on with this orange paint? The fact that he said it was Lamborghini orange, the car was on Ritex, airbag suspension, you know, you start to think of things. And he did have somewhat of a vision with this car, and he pulled it off absolutely beautifully. You have to get past the fact that it's not a five or 600 horsepower car and look at the details. You have to look at the dashboard and look at how everything is aircraft inspired. You gotta remember, this was 1959. This was the jet age. So everything is kind of airplane related, right? You've got these beautiful toggle switches that you flip down, okay, for your temperature, your heat and whatnot. Um, you know, push buttons for the controls. Not fancy R8. Oh, they work. That's even better. All right, so let me ask you a question. I mean, why a 59 bottom? Um, why not? Beautiful style. I love. I love the, the the mid to late 50s cars. Uh, the 59 Bonneville was the first of the wide body. It was an extra long car. Uh, it was just a beautiful car from the factory, and I was never able to afford one when they were new or even a, a, within a few years of that. So I was, saw this one for sale and thought I'd go for it. Uh, the car had been sitting in Kansas in a someone's backyard for probably about 15 years. Uh, they had to try to customize it again probably about 15 years before. Right. Got tired of it. It was sitting in the backyard. Uh, but it was basically all there. I was able to get it at a reasonable price. I okay. saw pictures of it. Um, so I had them ship it out. Uh, it was in very, you know, it was in decent condition for a car that's sitting in a yeah. field. I mean, there were rats living it and there sure. was some some body rot, uh, but there was definitely a lot of potential. And I was, I was telling you earlier that when the flatbed came up and this thing was on the back of the flatbed, my wife came out and you know thought I was ready. She's ready to call a psychiatrist. She <laughs> I was definitely gone over the edge. Uh, but I said I have a vision. And the, now, was that truth or? Uh, uh, well, I always tell her I have a vision anytime I do anything. I, mean, <laughs> I never go into anything blindly, right? <laughs> It may be stupid at the time, and even afterwards, but I thought it was the right decision. 
For 59, it was Pontiac's first year of the quote unquote wide track stand, which means the wheels on the car on front and back were actually moved to the outer corners. This helped the car get a much more stable ride, which it does. I mean, this car rides beautifully. And they used it for about the whole wide track thing, I guess for about 10 years or so. Then they dropped it, and then all of a sudden, like, the mid to late 80s hit, and it was Pontiac wide track all over again. I mean, it was more of a marketing thing. But if you look at the body itself, this is a massive, massive car. This car is 19 feet long. The rear quarter panel, okay, stretches from the back of my door, obviously, it's not a surprise, but to the end, the rear quarter panel is almost eight feet long. That's one panel. Think about the stamping process that the manufacturers had to go through for that. Think about how big the deck lid is, right? We open that trunk, you can almost fit, and I'm not exaggerating, a full-size mattress in the trunk laid down. In fact, you could fit the entire, let's see, we could probably fit nine Chris Harris's, okay? I'm gonna go with 13 Leo Parentes. We can do I, uh, maybe seven JFs. In short, the entire tribe team could go on holiday in the trunk of this car. It's, it's just obscenely huge. Power-wise, you know, you step on the gas in this thing, and it's got more than enough grunt. Uh, it's got plenty of power for me. You know, so I mean, but the motor, the motor's original to the car, correct? Yeah, the running gear is 100% uh, original. Uh, engine, transmission, rear end. Okay. I haven't changed anything mechanically on the car. And how big is the engine? It's a uh, 289 cubic inch, 300 horsepower. And the car was, car's, car's got to weigh, what, 4,800 pounds? It's about 4,800 pounds, so it's a, it's a lot of weight. You do need a big engine, but, you know, it's plenty powerful enough. They, these cars did come with a, um, a three twos, you know, also, okay. uh, which brought the horsepower up. But this car, when I found it, had the four barrel, and, and I left it down. Okay. The Bonneville, I think you were saying before, this shares the same basic, I guess it's the glass and the roof line with a couple of other cars, no? Right. Uh, uh, is it called the roof line or the belt line uh, up? Okay. Uh, is the same exact as the 1959 Chevy, 1959 Cadillac, and the, and the, the Pontiac. So 59 okay. and 60 are exactly the same. So the windows, everything about it is exactly the same. Okay. The 59 Bonneville, though, this design with the tail lamps and the split, and this was 59 only, though, correct? Correct. So the body itself, from you know the, the, the side windows down, is 1959 Pontiac only. Okay. So this has four fins in the back. That's 59 only. The split grille in the front, this was the first year of the split Pontiac grille, but in 60, they get away with it. So when you see a car with the four fins in the back and uh, the split grille in the front and almost 19 feet long, <laughs> you know that it's a 59 ball. One of the cool parts about this particular car is the rear view mirrors. The rear view mirror is just this beautiful little stock, adjustable, but it's, it's very nicely sculpted. Now, for your side view mirror, which the car only has one, it's not mounted traditionally on the door, which most cars obviously have. It's actually mounted up here on the front fender. I mean, you could bring that back today and it would make perfect sense. Manufacturers, they lose their way at times, I think and they forget about what design is. And I guess we know times have changed and we know modern elements come into it and there are things like safety features and whatnot and, and all the technology that they want to put. So parts become bigger and bulkier, but you, I, I, I don't understand why you still can't design something that's beautiful. I mean, think about it. When was the last time you saw a really beautiful car? Aside from something super exotic like a Ferrari or a Lamborghini, when was the last time you saw a beautiful car that made you stop and go, oh my God, a car like this that makes you just want to look inside of it and under it and look at the gauges and the switches and stuff, the, the chrome work on the car, the fact that Bonneville is actually raised off the dash in script, the fact that the bezels have the fins of a starship on them and that your gauges are so unbelievably clear that why can't you do that again? The fact that we have these little quarter windows that are, well, that's the real window, little quarter windows that are cranks and they crank open. 
I love it, I love it, I love it. You know, you people say, well, what do you think about modern cars? I think they're appliances. They have some semblance of use, and we all know that. But man, for style, you can't touch a car like this. You simply cannot touch a car like this. When I first saw this car, I, I felt like I was a kid at the World's Fair. I felt like it should be on a rotisserie and this should be a concept car. It, it almost doesn't look real to me. You look at the ornate dash, the chrome and the orange paint, the wire wheels and the white walls, and then you get in it and you start it and you hear that rumble. It's not crazy fast, it doesn't handle like a slot car, and it does not do burnouts. This is a car that's made for driving, and it was just outstanding. Some cars have distinct personalities. This one just says, look at me, enjoy me, and don't let me go. And it's something that I don't want to do. So on that note, guys, thanks for watching Big Muscle, and uh, we'll see you again next week. I love this car. I actually might go to jail because I don't want to give this back. You got pulled over here. Is it right here? This, you, this is where you got pulled over in Zach's Cobra last season. Oh. Right here. Oh, right here. Uh-huh. This is where your hat flew off. Oh. Yep, that's the place. And you got pulled. Thaddeus got busted here last year when we were filming Zach's Cobra. And he was like, I just want to drive it once. And he drove it and he went from zero to 85 in about eight seconds and immediately got pulled over. I made it farther than that. You did. <laughs>